Here we have even the biggest problem of all with regard to HMI standardization. So starting from a pain of installing such a system to, of course, somewhat of a pain in, in using it. And also we have a group of wearables. So instead of having everything laying around and just having our phone stitched to our pockets, now we have different things we shall be wearing, such as these different glasses, although these, this is a little bit of a failure. But still, there are smart watches and these different pedometers, different fitness trackers. So everything is pretty, pretty uh, a potpourri of different things that we pretty much uh, need to learn how to use one by one. So uh, the dilemma causing this trouble uh, basically uh, stands from the situation that we have. Uh, this sign is says is as it go, we go for integration or differentiation. Uh, integration means that we want to provide a unique experience for every single user. Unique experience would mean the same HMI, similar experience in using devices. Uh, this is what Google is trying to do effectively, but the. The industry is opposing that because there are a lot of push towards who's going to be the first, who's going to sell the most. So the differentiation is something that is going on as well. And it opposes this integration effort. So integration is a kind of a communist thing. So you want to have the same thing for every single uh, person. Uh, maybe people would like that in the end of the day. But differentiation is pushed uh, from the industry to make everything different. And this differentiation, uh, also in the example of what, what we've been dealing with lately in RTRK, uh, comes in a sense of a, a game between the uh, telecom operators, for example. Telecom operators want to have their own offering of set of boxes, TVs, TV UIs for their customers so that they differentiate with regard to the competition. So in the integration sense, we need to have a single platform and single you can read this as expectable HMI. And the differentiation wants to have these different brands, multiple competing platforms, and innovative HMIs. And this innovation is, of course, unpredictable. And this innovation does not necessarily mean that the thing shall be very useful for the consumer or expected and in line with his way of life and his expectations. So uh, the example of this is uh, what, we, what we did our, uh, in, in RTRK regarding Android. So if you are following uh, our papers, several years we are publishing papers on, on what we are doing under uh, Android OS for TVs. Uh, Android TV is actually a standardization effort by Google uh, that would make each of our TVs and set of boxes exactly the same. So uh, And uh, all the services like voice control, um, search, of course, and accessing content would be exactly the same across all TVs. So this is the trend that has happened already at the, at the smartphones, uh, with the small exception of Apple, of course. Uh, but uh, every other smartphone basically running Android has a very similar HMI. And this is what Google is trying to do to make the world the same with this regard. However, we have one interesting example we were uh, working on. Uh, this is a service project we did, a system integration project for Buick Telecom. This is a French telecom that was um, that that wanted to create a new set of box. They even um, hired a guy that was making these scenes in the Minority Report movie, like when Tom Cruise is going with a hand in a kind of holographic interface. So this is, this is the guy that actually designed the interface for Miami too, and their goal was to create something new, something innovative on top of Android. So basically, uh, this happened uh, exactly at the, point, at the point in time where Google uh, didn't know whether Google TV will die off or go further to being Android TV. If you remember, there was Google TV before Android TV. It was called Google TV. Korean group was maintaining it. Uh, and actually, uh, Buick Telecom created their own interface and was allowed to utilize Google services like Search and Google Play, YouTube, and these, these services under a completely custom UI. Uh, right after they published this, Google, for, uh, Google has forbidden that. So. Um, uh, it was no longer possible. So in order to, to be able to use YouTube and voice search, you would definitely need to use this HMI and not this. Uh, 
And therefore, they kind of pushed Buick Telecom to have both. So in the revised version of the software for, for Miami 2 box, users ended up having two home buttons of the remote controller. So one popping up this interface and the other one popping up this interface. So this is basically an example of how integration principle and differentiation principle can collide. And uh, operators are pushing the game of differentiation all the time. There's also a, another dilemma uh, that is causing the trouble for consumer. It is what I called one size approach versus the use case approach. So what to offer? Uh, one size approach is basically setting up a product or a product line that would serve many use cases so that we could pretty much do everything with one device or with a group of devices. Use case approach is actually when we have many, many devices for every single use case that we set up and that serves exactly one use case. Uh, this is specifically true for home automation nowadays. Uh, let's say that one size approach, we can call it an omni solution, that basically a solution encompassing all needs. Uh, and uh, software engineers and, and our uh, engineering group are, is about to blame for this uh, uh, because we are pushing scalability. Scalability sometimes can be a death sentence to the consumer because if you want something to be scalable, this means that we have a lot of functions that are actually not needed at a point in time or a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, redundancy in, in the current products. So just to to enable uh, the utilization of, uh, of, um, of the product in the future. There's also a lot of over-engineering existing there. So it is, everything is fine if we consider consumers do-it-yourself do geeks, but now this is the question, whether the majority of consumers are still Richard Stallman kind of Unix way, do-it-yourself people, or focuses uh, of nowadays that just expect the technology to to, to work for their benefit without playing around or fooling around with them, with that. Use case driven approach, therefore, is a completely opposite thing. We take on a specific problem, it's simple, it's streamlined, and usually it requires only one or two commands by, you, by a user and, uh, to, to uh, fulfill the function. If we take home automation as the example for this dilemma, that I did a, a small case study at IFA this year uh, during the ICC Berlin. Uh, there were more than, more than 50 competing companies for home automation uh, market offering different kind of solutions for home automation. We made a list in the end of the day because uh, RTRK also uh, has a home automation product. Half of them were exactly like split into halves. Half of them were Omni, like offering the, the home automation solution, whatever that would be. When you say today, what is home automation? It's a very hard question. What does it mean? What can I do? This is what customers usually ask us, so what can I do with it? Then the answer is you can do everything. What does it mean everything? You can control your lights, okay. Why? I can control the light via the switch already. So this is the question. You cannot persuade the consumer that controlling the light over the smartphone is something that is very smart. So uh, the use cases are, are very, they exist of course, but then, we, then it's up to consumers to invent use cases. So in the Omni approach, consumers shall invent the use case very often, and, and this is not something that consumers would like to do. Uh, the use case driven approach uh, instead packs up these home automation kits uh, and technologies into some use case enablers. For example, here for the Omni approach, I have selected one solution called Y Butler. There's like tons of things out there. So you simply shall get a gateway and shall get a bunch of these devices and then you simply don't know what to do with them. It is very useful, of course, but you need an installer person or somebody who would, who would just install everything and create a bunch of uh, utilization cases for this technology. Uh, opposing to that, there are some extreme cases of integration home automation, like this cannery security system. It's basically one device that keeps an eye on the, on the home. Or even, uh, even more extreme, this peanut, sense peanut, there's simply a, a different use case for automation technology, like you attach it to the box of uh, medication and uh, it reminds you when to take, uh, if, you, if you missed uh, taking the pill, etc. So it's kind of a very, very dedicated for different use case, being that a sleep monitoring, uh, medication intake or something else. Uh, Oblo uh, Living, as one of the RTR case, uh, solutions, um, actually is trying to uh, create a mix 
between the two. So we have the technology uh, that is out there, so all the nodes, something similar to, to, to this Sui Butler. Uh, but we say, okay, this all potpourri of different technology uh, things, like gadgets, clouds, gateways, uh, and, and other stuff, applications, is something that we will sell as B2B, so using white label approach. So we will not, we are not going to sell that in that way to the, to the end consumer. However, when we are selling to the end consumer, then we will invent uh, a use case, at the very, very least, the kit. So each kit shall have a very specific use case and very specific selection of devices that go with them. So this is one way to overcome the, overcome the problem. Also, uh, when it comes to use cases, there are some ideas that RTRK is considering to, to uh, be utilized with, uh, with our gateway and with uh, some equipment that is existing or with some, some, some dedicated equipment. Uh, for example, the utmost simplicity is what we call an all-button idea. So just imagine having a button in your home, you press the button and something happens. Uh, this something happens can be that your pizza arrives at, at your doorstep, let's say. And usually this is followed by a very simple customer service, like you, are, you have a phone number on the box uh, with a button, and you call the phone number and say, okay, this is the number of my device. Uh, can you please set up this service to happen when I press the button? And then you say, okay, I want the pizza to come to my doorstep, or I want my light to turn on, or, or, or I want my uh, daughter to be called on the phone or whatever. So this is kind of an example of very simple use case. Uh, this is, if we go uh, in the use case approach, this is uh, for the home automation where we, where we could go and be adopted today in, in, in the view of RTRKs. Uh, when we are talking about uh, integration takes, so to make an Omni thing, but to, to play uh, the Google's game, to uh, we believe that augmented reality uh, is, uh, can answer the, the problem of, of that. Uh, the, the, the problem uh, will uh, completely be removed if we remove the uh, intermediary thing. Intermediary thing is the screen and the user interface is actually standing in our way. So if we remove the user inter interface, if we go completely to augmenting our own reality plus using the voice as a control, is basically resolving the problem of, of different HMIs and the problem of standardization of HMI. But the problem here is that we will probably wait for some time until this is completely resolved, until we, we all become cyborgs or have have the, 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 some kind of pair of glasses that is uh, convenient to wear and that will augment our world. Uh, so uh, to, to conclude here, we had some dilemmas. Probably I gave some of the conclusions why the users are so, so overwhelmed. This is also the take of, of RTRK as an in, uh, institution uh, in our product lines, especially Oblo, home automation. Maybe somebody saw it at Zigbee Pavilion we were presenting the solution at this CES. Uh, so integration versus differentiation dilemma. So we said that it is pretty much a tough game and how tough it is we can see uh, from this year's IFA that Google nearly gave up. What does it mean? Uh, with regards to my previous example of Android TV, they allowed operators to have their own HMIs on Android TV devices that are actually not how Google would like them to be. So this is a very, uh, this is a game changer a bit uh, because there was a huge push to use Android and to use Google services uh, by operators, but operators simply didn't want to go with Google's UI uh, all the time or almost never, especially the big ones. Uh, so Google eventually gave up and uh, let uh, the customization of the UI happen. However, uh, they still require that you have uh, the access to applications uh, in a first level of your menu and that once and that users are offered applications as if they were using their own, uh, their own HMI. So for Google, it is important that users have access to applications because this is their business model effectively to provide a last mile, to provide application developers with the ability to, to reach out to people. Uh, then again, all these people are using these apps and then all the stats and all the data is gathered by Google. So this is their business model in the end of the day. If we want to unlock 
the home automation and Internet of Things arenas. So the Omni solution uh, in these realms does not work. So there are many providers out there and the sold volumes are really, really low. So these companies are barely surviving and uh, there is a tough game. Uh, specifically when the big players entered, like uh, Samsung with the Smart Hub and LG and others uh, entering, entering the game. Uh, so use cases are something that is, that is missing here. So inventing some, some very, very nice use cases is, is very welcome. But I said here, but, three dots. Uh, this but stands for whether we, whether we understood the consumers very well. So my kid, for example, uses the smartphone very easily. So th this is the technology he was born with. And uh, maybe this is the factor that I overlooked in this presentation. What if we have the technology from day zero in our lives? Is that technology hard to be used or not? And also, the geek factor is something that I kind of ruling out when I am speaking about one size versus the use case. So this is pretty much the struggle between uh, in the Apple, it was between, between Woz and, and Steve Jobs, so whether to allow the customization of a computer or just to close the thing. And uh, I think this debate is, is still alive uh, and whether, whether people really want to uh, mess up with the technology uh, to, to install and configure. For me, for example, I have a default ringtone on the phone. So for me, it's a kind of a, you know, it's kind of a hustle to, to customize things and to, but I wasn't this way like 10 years ago. I was a bit different, but now uh, I kind of started thinking differently. Maybe I don't have time anymore. I'm simply tired. Uh, so, so this is something that we need uh, to, to investigate. What is the level of this? There's also one example from RTRK, and I'm going to finish here, uh, with set of boxes that we were really uh, doing hard with operators to create a um, user interface that would serve this differentiation need. Uh, and this user interface uh, was following the principle that said content is king. So not too much things on the screen shall be shown. Just a few things. Other than that, it's content. And then we got, a, got a, some, some project for the German market. And the sales guys that were selling set of boxes, satellite set of boxes for the German market uh, were in a need for a new box that had an interesting feature to show a signal to noise ratio and bit error rate in info banner. Not necessarily in the first layer of the info banner, but after clicking info two or three times, you would need to get the signal quality and either, even, even audio and video PIDs. And then I, 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 I kind of stopped for a moment and said, OK, there must be some custom consumers, some people out there that really kind of want to set their satellite antenna by them, by all by themselves and monitor these quality indicators and want it to be like in the, in the first menu layer, like the signal to noise ratio. It was kind of a very impossible to, to expect by looking at these Western trends, uh, in the American trends probably that we were, that we were all kind of following with the content is king, etc. So I would keep a small door open here to, to, to investigate a little bit further whether the one size or this kind of geek approach or use case approach is better. But still for me, I think the, we need to have the use case for the major majority of population. So Serbia is interesting in that regard because we have like um, different uh, from from the companies that have billions in in gaming industry uh, like top eleven like a Facebook game it's a very it's an Nordias that's a Belgrade based company uh, earning a lot of cash to service oriented companies that only do some I don't know like freelancing services uh, on the on the other side of the coin so there's everything. So I would say that uh, IT industry nowadays uh, in the whole world reflects the globalization trend, so there are pretty much no limits. Um, RTRK is even a good example how we can also uh, do a lot of work uh, even if there's hardware involved. So there's pretty much no limitation to, to making embedded stuff, consumer stuff that has hardware plus software. Uh, maybe the, wh what, what is not existing in Serbia nowadays is really like a silicon kind of research, nano level, these things are kind of reserved for the, for the West 
or for China. <laughs> Today also they are doing the same thing. So I was pretty pretty astonished what what the guys are able to do. And in in the in the last couple of years, I think they're really really kept up uh, with with the rest of us. So probably we we now see the decline in kind of a. There was a huge hype regarding this IoT and home automation. Now it's kind of stable. It declined and now it's stable. Uh, I think we are waiting for the next enabler um, in, in, in some kind of technology so this will fly again. Uh, so in two years from now, probably some of the takes that we had like being failed previously, like maybe smart homes, IoT, taking another chance. Maybe even some technology that we think that, like 3D TV for homes, maybe it will take another chance. I, I, I think that it will be cycles again, uh, like, like we witnessed bes before. Some technologies couldn't uh, live in that time, but maybe in the future they will, they will, they will live. These like smart glasses or something like this, maybe they will also, also be back. Not in two years, probably. Okay. Two years is very short term. I, I don't believe that in two years we will witness like a tremendous change, but five years, five to ten years probably, okay. something more substantial will happen. Yeah.